The Raw Box girls, as we sort of we touched on in uh, in the team meeting the other day, um, was just something tangible that we could sort of take with us, and, and we just sort of throw stuff in there that that um, reminded us or taught us, or something that's going to be going to be memorable. And we said we'd open it um, sort of post the Olympics and, and and go through it. Now I'll start with this one because um, Talina's debut in um, in Sao Paulo. She dislocated her shoulder in the warm-up before it even started, and they had to cut uh, cut her shirt off her. We always said once we finished the Olympics that um, we were going to come back and, and as a squad, um, you know, old, um, new, retired, that we all get together and sort of go through go through those moments to aid us to move forward. Shani, since she was a little girl, her dream was to play for Australia and wear the green and gold in the Olympics. Shani has such a passion for sport and now wears the Australian colours with pride. We are so proud of what you have achieved. You have, you have a wonderful family. The girls around you are awesome. Good luck in Brazil. Don't forget to roar. We love you, Shani. Dreams do come true. Big hugs from your number one supporters. <laughs> this is a fully new team. Going into 2017, uh, we've got to rebuild and we've got to start again. We can't just rest on our laurels and... Um, go off the uh, hard work we've done the last few years. We've got to kind of reform as a group and set, um, set our own goals. We're a new team and set our own goals and our own standards and go from there. So um, it's really important tonight to kind of reflect on the past and that's where you learn is um, you learn from the past and you change it for the future. I, I know I always say it, but I'm so proud to, have, um, to be part of it and, and to be involved in it and to, to see everything just sort of come to fruition and just um, all of you getting what you deserve. And like I said, 12 of, the, 12 of you are out there and, and, and did it, but everybody has, has contributed. Um, so um, officially, congratulations, well done, and to 2017. Yeah. Rugby.com.au Films and Onion TV presents an intimate look inside one of the Rio Olympics' most endearing journeys. The Australian women's sevens team has propelled women's sport into the spotlight on a global scale. Their gold medal performance was seen as a watershed moment for the sport worldwide, but the unseen preparation on the road to Rio will now be the focus of a documentary that digs deeper than ever before. Coming off winning the gold medal, coming to Sydney, this is a big moment in your careers. If they're gonna get us, they're gonna get us on the outside. Okay, we don't get caught one off. I just wanna play as much as I can. One, for the opportunity, and two, because our team feels more comfortable with me doing that. It's gonna be really disciplined, okay? They're gonna slow it all down. Listen to the ref, they're gonna try and slow it down, and be real disciplined. The series will anchor itself in the 2017 season where coach Tim Walsh, his support staff and squad of players must now manage an even greater level of expectation for success, an increased media profile and a wave of popularity for the team and the sport in general. Using unseen footage from the previous four years, this new series will savour each moment in the lead up to the Rio Olympics and celebrate the subsequent journey in which a unique culture and team environment exists. This is a story of mateship and belief, but also one of painstaking preparation and attention to every detail that has contributed to one of the country's finest sporting moments. Watch on as the cameras are given access to the team's inner sanctum, which allows the audience to witness a story where the ending is yet to be written, but whose past goes down in history. This is Hold Back the River, the story behind the Australian women's sevens team. Five months have passed since the Rio Olympics. The legacy of that success remains evident as the Australian Women's Sevens program prepares for life after Rio. 
We obviously had a very successful 216 world champions, Olympic um, you know, gold medalists, uh, and looking ahead towards you know, this season, uh, we'd like to keep the, the success going, um, you know, consistently being on the podium, um, winning championships where possible. Uh, and we're training with the boys again, so um, particular you two, just managing their, their loads and communicating that in. In the session, Craig, at your XL D cell there, and then um, in the warm up, uh, it was dealing with with the the pressure of expectation um, and also rebuilding for the future. So looking at different benchmark events uh, and also the character in which we we could uh, could shape and find um, to be able to repeat those kind of, of, of performances that we saw in 2016. We're going to have to dig in, I think, and just manage them well. That'll be fine. Dismissed. Go. The biggest challenge for the players, and particularly the, the group that were so successful over the, the last couple of years uh, and performed so well in Rio, is just coming down, and that, that's to be expected. Um, you know, girls sacrificed a lot for Rio. They changed sports, they centralised, they moved to a new location, and put all their energy and effort into actually, you know, winning gold, a gold medal, and we actually did it. We know that post Rio, the biggest challenge is about the mental resilience and our theme for this season is, is respect and character and managing a whole new expectation on, on, the, on the team. Oh, pick up there. As soon as you do that, you're in trouble, so you want to be going. So nothing's going backwards. Yeah. The rugby doesn't change too much, but I think it's just the little detail around our nutrition, you know, what we're doing away from the field. Um, where, as I said, I know we did everything right to put ourselves in the best physical performance for Rio. And maybe, you know, maybe that's going to be the greatest challenge for the girls. For meeting, your team room for meeting. August 8th, 2016. What's going to be, what's going to be happening, do you think? We're going to win gold. I've got the best feeling about it. The girls are prepping well. We've just got to keep ticking those boxes and, you know, gold will come our way if we focus on our processes. Let's say now you have a crystal ball in your hand and you're going to imagine the next three years of your life. What do you think that'll happen? Um, well, hopefully I'm going to move to Sydney next year. Yeah. And then we're going to train really hard and be at the Olympics in three years' time, winning gold medals. Is your ultimate goal to get to the Olympics? Yeah, for sure. That was... Um, Definitely in the back of my mind when I decided to make the switch to seven. So yeah, Rio 2016 is, is definitely a massive goal of mine. Uh, in 2016, I'll probably cry. Um, either because I've made the team or because I didn't make the team. And then it'll be a long, hard journey to the top where the Aussie team will be getting their gold medal on, this, on the podium at the Olympic Games. Shut up, kids, shut up. Let's go, let's go, back in the game and chat, back in the game and chat. The foundation of the Olympic success was anchored in a comprehensive three-year plan, taking athletes from varied backgrounds and moulding them into a highly effective sporting unit. The carefully choreographed program had to make room for innovation as the sport was moving forward into uncharted waters. First ever World Series title in the 15-16 season and now here to Rio as number one ranked and number one seed in the country. Oh, and to be announced in the um, Olympic 12 this um, today is absolutely awesome and really excited and we've been training really hard for this over the last three years so it's going to be absolutely awesome to get over there and experience the whole Olympics and hopefully perform um, our best on the day. It's pretty extra special for me to be able to to watch these girls, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and in, in their in their dreams, and then, you know, almost you know a realization that that one they're going, but then keep keep the focus on going there is just part of it. It's going there and performing, which is which is uh, you know what's going to make it you know extra special and, and, and very memorable. <laughs> The Australian Sevens program has endured a challenging genesis from fledgling code to one of the fastest growing sports on earth. It has been, and continues to be, a journey of change and reinvention. 
So in 2012, the Sevens program was a camp space program, many weeks down at the AIS. In 2014, we centralised and basically moved everyone to train out of the Sydney Academy of Sport at Narrabeen. It's been an awesome facility. Cone and relay, two minutes. Kickball reflex, one minute. Bad pass pick up, two minutes, and then switch loop. When the girls came in, very limited rugby experience and um, in terms of professionalism, no experience. So we're very cognizant of of when we got here that we weren't going to just take what we knew as ex-professional athletes and just drop it into the team. We wanted the team to evolve and find their own their own style and their own identity. So there was certainly a lot of guidance but didn't want to um, just drop things in there and say this is how you do it. Without any shadow of doubt if we didn't centralise in 2014 not only would it have been a challenge to actually qualify it, there is no way we would have won a gold medal. So, um, you know, Tim coming on board in the back end of 2013, instilling belief in the girls over that period of time leading in was, you know, obviously a big factor in our success. Five years ago, I was in Italy and uh, I was finished off as a, a season there and the Under 20s World Cup came to my little town in Padova. And, uh, I ended up being the analyst and at the end of it, um, Dave News 4 and Aunt Eddie took me aside and said we uh, want to offer you a job, would you like to be the coaching coordinator of Sevens, the assistant coach to men and the women, which I took with the focus that I was going to coach the men. Well I think when you started coaching and it, and it went with the group that we had initially, like a very underdeveloped, um, eclectic group of, of athletes from different backgrounds. He was very prescriptive, um, and he had to be, to, to get them to understand the game and, and understand what they needed to do and what was required of them. He's really created a vision for the team and then drove that team in a direction that we wanted to, to go. And I think the way that he's gone about, you know, technically coaching girls that hadn't played rugby a lot of them hadn't done a lot of contact to make it a real point of difference for the team. He did, you know, he did a really good job. We definitely challenge him quite a lot, um, being women, wanting to know all the answers. I had a, had a period there I was coaching both the men and the women. So I'd go into a, a men's session and we'd talk about the session and and uh, go through a few plays and a few um, sort of strategies and there'd be any, any questions you know, to the boys and they'd be, no, we're good. Yep, okay, and then I go into, into a girl session and we talk about what we're gonna do and then any questions and then 12 hands would go up. He obviously grew up playing with boys, coaching boys and things like that and so in a group of girls, um, understanding what girls need and how detailed information needs to come across. There's some people that he can yell at and say that's not good enough but then others he needs to um, take a side and be like, look, you could work on this, this was good, but you need to improve this type thing. And I think he's tried really hard on that because we've honed on him that he <laughs> sometimes just doesn't get it. <laughs> Probably one of the best coaches I think I've ever been coached by. You know, he's so honest, he's been in the elements that we, coming into the game, you know, we'd never been a part of a full-time program. We never travelled the world so much playing sevens, and he's been there, he's done that. He understands women. At the start, he probably didn't really get us, and, you know, he's now got 20, 20 women that he's doing to look after us. The fun and the laughter and the enjoyment that the girls have as a team, you know, that's the singing, the dancing, um, and a lot of that the carry on in the off field. And I think he has really fostered that um, and driven again that and, and latched on to knowing that's a really key ingredient of the team dynamics. He gives us the rein to kind of control where we want to go with our team, which, you know, gives us great confidence in ourselves and in each other. And I think the passion that he shows towards us as individuals, rugby sevens as a game and women's sport in general, is just very infectious to us. Pre-season is about breaking down and rebuilding bodies. The responsibility of maintaining the finely tuned athletes for the rigours of a contact sport is one not taken lightly. During this period, we've got a, a big focus on getting them through as, as much work as we can. You know, it really sets us up for, for the season because obviously there's a reduced time between tournaments. Um, four cone uh, relay, heavy ball, really narrow. 30 seconds and then we'll get some width and use the rugby ball. Okay, then kickball reflex, bad pass pick up, switch loop, 5v5, and then six in bibs. And I'll bring the boys down here. The 
point of the pre-season to me is to prepare the the players both probably more mentally and physically, so pushing them as hard as they can go, possibly harder than they've ever gone before. Yes, Tiana. Well done, B-Ball. Yeah, wide, wide, wide. Um, so that physically they're, they're ready, but also um, mentally they know how hard they can push themselves. So when it comes to a tight moment in a game that they can perform at their best. Nice tap, D. Good composure. Girls, just while we're here, team three, Bitiana, Shani, Varney, Kaslik, Quirk, Cherry and Green. Okay, the next one, team three. Really good, nothing through the middle. Listen, it forced them onto the outside. Okay, team three, you ready? Yep. Training with the boys is not a battle of the sexes, but instead a reverent nod to the advancing science of sport. The women's ability to mix it in terms of skill and fitness is a credit to the training innovations that Rugby Sevens continues to implement. All in all, I think it was good for us. Okay, certainly many, we'll look at the video, many areas to improve on, but um, good intensity too. <coughs> One, two, three, Aussie, bring it. Let's go high, high five the boys. The type of training, you know, went from being able to how much the players can actually handle in within a session, and uh, you know, in the early days, it was sort of day on, day off, and you know, limited the amount of kilometres and high-speed metres and all that kind of stuff. And as you went on, it's become far more resilient, a lot more science involved in it. The intensity, the skill in which they did it, the combinations which they build up, it just became like incredible. Mondays and Fridays are our bigger running days, so higher volume and higher high-speed running days. Wednesday is usually more of a contact day, a um, bit more technical focus, uh, lower high speed running but sort of similar volumes to the other days. And Tuesday is again another technical session with um, a lift on each of the, or like a strength and power session on each of those days. Oh, the training is brutal, I'll be honest with you. It's a lot of contact, a lot of fitness, a lot of repeat speed efforts, not many drink breaks. It's intense. From a physical point of view, it's a, a combination of strength, speed, power, but also the ability to, to run all day, essentially. I think people don't realise how often we train and how regularly we train. Um, when you talk to the general public, I think a lot of them still think that we just go away once a month type thing, that we don't train every day. It's not our full-time professional job. Oh, I don't think people would realise that we do sessions against the men in order to enhance our physicality and our capabilities. I still think I'm pretty fit, but I used to train with them and used to quite tolerate it quite easily. Now they absolutely school me. I think you never really realise the brutality and the intensity of sevens until you're in it yourself at a world-class level. I had watched quite a bit of sevens leading up to it um, to see what I was in for when I, when I wasn't as experienced. And, um, you know, you think like, oh yeah, you want to give it a go. And then you put yourself in a game and it is, it is by far the toughest sport I've ever played. I know when I first started I could hardly even lift the bar doing bench press and now we're doing like 60, 70 kilos. Um, so I think that's definitely where we're changing and we're trying to keep our fitness bases and our speed but try and get a lot stronger. See, see how, I know that's against the boys, but see how that, that shiny's pass is just that defence. The first outing of 2017 provides an unusual prospect, a home field advantage for the first time in the Sevens World Series. You know, the girls are really excited about the opportunity to play in Sydney. You know, to play in front of a sellout crowd, particularly on the, the Saturday, um, but to play in front of 40,000 at Allianz Stadium, it's going to be an awesome, uh, awesome atmosphere and a great, you know, great opportunity for, again, for the girls to showcase their skills and also, for I guess, for the Australian sporting public to come out and support their, you know, their Olympic champions. 2017 has brought with it a new roster, a new focus, but the same standard of excellence. We've got different goals and different uh, objectives for, for tournaments and, and the season, but um, at Paramount, an imperative to all of them is our, is our performance and making sure that we're on, on, on the podium. So again, a whole different tournament, uh, Sydney. Again, different expectations, different pressures. The weight of expectation on, on the team is something that we have to we have to handle. 
what motivates the players and has for for all for all these years are the the families and and the friends that have sort of made them and created them and doing it um, you know such influences in their lives and doing it for them so be able to do it at home in front of them strong and rigid everything goes off here yeah, yeah it's good how are you feeling doing making it like yeah, it's easy. oh it's easy. that's why you go up so. don't drop your head forward you gotta keep your head up otherwise it just caves everything in okay the woman's sevens machine has many moving parts the support crew carries equal weight in terms of culture contribution and accountability. I think with every successful team, there's always numerous moving parts, but I can honestly say that Craig and Scott are like brothers to me now. It's just been um, an incredible relationship that we've uh, endured over, over the time, and we've grown as 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 people, we've challenged each other, we've challenged the girls, the girls have challenged us. They always say, um, you know, your job is only as good as the people you work with, and like, I love those guys and I love the girls. I think Scotty's role over the last four years is um, definitely one that's been underrated. The girls who played in Rio get a lot of the accolades, but Craig Twentyman, Tim Walsh, and definitely Scott Bowen has just been such an essential thing. He's constantly um, challenging me, and again, the combination that we have is, uh, is, is really complimentary. You know, I'll strategize and deliver and come up with ideas, but if I'm ever, ever stuck or need some advice, or even not advice, he'll challenge me on everything. Scotty's a very good in-between because he's, he's able to communicate things between both sides of, of the equation. Craig um, has a, an incredible amount of professionalism and skill within his work, but he has this incredible balance to be able to to switch off and just have a really good time as well on a on a on a really sensible level, and uh, the professionalism and the balance he has to be able to do that, the relationship he has with the players, is just phenomenal. Craig's involvement um, in the team and uh, him and Walsh are together are a, a perfect union. He turned the team into, particularly in those early years, 2013, 14, were by far and away the fittest team in the, on the World Series. You know, the last two years leading into Rio and the centralisation at Narrabeen, the strength work that he was able to put into girls that had never really lifted weights, um, you know, frequently or consistently, uh, and I guess the development programs that he put in place, he made some of these girls world's best athletes. As I mentioned, I, lo I love working with the, the group of athletes that we've got. They are unbelievably skilled group, but they're also a very tight-knit group and they work extremely hard for each other um, and that is where they get their, their results from.